welcome. Welcome. Good morning and welcome. Good morning and welcome. Father, we welcome your presence. Once again, we welcome your presence. We welcome your Holy Spirit. We welcome your joy, your peace, your strength, your goodness. We welcome it. We embrace it today, this day that you've made. We thank you for it. We are here for another day. You've given us life for another day. You've given us strength for another day. And so we want to thank you, Lord. Thank you for your goodness and your loving kindness that is over our lives, that is over our families, that is over our uh, the people that we work with, that is in our communities. Thank you, Lord, for your grace and your mercy for today. Your mercy, new mercies you give us each and every day. So we are grateful for it. We are grateful for it. Thank you, Lord, for this season that we're in. It may, may be a difficult season for some. Maybe it's rough for some. But Lord, you promise to go before us and you lead us in our way. You never abandon us. And so we want to thank you for that. We want to thank you for that. So welcome, my friends. Today is March 10th. It's Thursday. It's almost the end of the week already. Um, amazing how the weeks just and the days just go by so quickly. We, you know, it's like a <laughs> it's like a routine, you know, the hamster on the wheel just going about its business. But you know, we're grateful for it. We're grateful for it. We're grateful that we can stand, that we can sit, that we can move, that we have life. And um, all we need to do is just welcome the Lord in it. Oh, good morning, Daddy. Good morning. How are you, Daddy? I wish you could be here next to me so you can make the people laugh. Because I'm not funny like you. You're funny. <laughs> My dad is so funny he is so funny he will crack you up he is a true puerto rican funny guy anyway i didn't inherit his humor unfortunately but you know i make do with with whatever <laughs> with whatever I, I laugh at myself that that's what i do i laugh at myself <laughs> i crack myself up and i noticed that my, that gift passed on to my daughter my daughter she would start to tell you a joke and right in the middle of it, she just begins to laugh. Joke's not even over. You're just sitting there waiting for the punchline. And she is just cracking up. <laughs> so that's what we inherited from my dad. <laughs> we make ourselves laugh. We can't make other people laugh, but we make ourselves laugh. Okay. <clears throat> thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for today. Thank you for my father. I thank God that he's with us this morning. Okay. Today we're going to be reading from Psalm 68, Psalm 68, and I'm doing this in part one because Psalm 68 is pretty long and I don't, I don't like rushing through it. Um, I'm going to break it up into two parts. So I'm going to start with part one today and then tomorrow I will finish part two. So I think we're just going to go up to verse 16 today. And um, here's how it goes. It says, for the director of music of David. So David wrote this psalm, a psalm, a song. So I have to like enunciate that correctly because when I say it, it sounds the same. But David was saying this was a psalm, which is a song. And so he says, may God arise, may his enemies be scattered may his foes flee before him may you blow them away like smoke as wax melts before the fire may the wicked perish before god but may the may the righteous be glad and rejoice before god may they be happy and joyful sing to god sing praise of his name extol him who rides on the clouds rejoice before him his name is the lord come on david 
He's a father to the fatherless, a defender of widows. Is God in his holy dwelling? God sets the lonely in families. He leads out the prisoners with singing, all right? But the rebellious live in a sun-scorched land. When you, God, went out before your people, when you marched through the wilderness, the earth shook, the heavens poured down rain. Before God, the one of Sinai, before God, the God of Israel, you gave abundant showers, O oh God. You refreshed your weary inheritance. Your people settled in it, and from your bounty, God, you provided for the poor. The Lord announces the word and the women who proclaim it are a mighty throng, or in other words, the women who, who proclaim it are an army. Kings and armies flee in haste. The women at home divide the plunder. Even while you sleep among the sheep pens, the wings of my dove are sheathed with silver, its feathers with shining gold. When the Almighty scattered the kings in the land, it was like snow falling on, on Mount Zalman, Mount Bashan, majestic mountain, Mount Bashan, rugged mountain. Why gaze in envy, you rugged mountain, at the mountain where God chooses to reign, where the Lord himself will dwell forever? All right, that is part one. That is part one of Psalm 68. And David, you know, this was really a proclamation psalm. This was a, a psalm proclaiming the victories of God and the protection of God. The Lord is our protector. The Lord is our protector. And so he starts it off by saying, may God arise, may his enemies be scattered may his foes flee before him and i remember i remember hey good morning abby abby you remember this song probably um may god arise they used to sing it back in the lighthouse um how did it go how did it go how did it go um may god arise his enemies be scattered may god arise his enemies be scattered may god arise his enemies be scattered may god may god arise that's all i remember of the song <laughs> maybe that was it maybe that was all the song but i remember that song from when back you know 20 something years ago Yes. Okay. Abby remembers it. Abby, Abby remembers the song. Okay. So this is how David starts off the psalm. May God arise, may his enemies be scattered. And it's about how God conquers our enemies. When God rises up. Oh, hey, Vicky. Vicky girl. What's up, my beautiful girl? Girl, no. Listen, in the morning, I have my... <laughs> I have my, my morning voice. Oh, Lord, I have to fight through it. Abby says Sister Paula, Sister Paula's other song. Girl, you remember all of Sister Paula's favorite songs. That is so awesome. <laughs> that is so awesome. But yes, so I do remember that song from back in the day. And um, But it, it is a truth that we need to know. It is a truth that when God rises up, right? When, when we are being attacked by the enemy and God rises up, that's it. They're done for. They are done for. They don't stand a chance in the presence of our God. God fights our battles. We sometimes don't think he, he fights our battles because we're, we're caught up, right? We're caught up in the middle of it. But God is constantly, constantly fighting our battles. Those things that we face in life, those dilemmas, those emotional things, um, those struggles that we're dealing with, if we're dealing with our children, if we're dealing with our health, if we're dealing with our spouses, if we're dealing with family members or, or things at work, you know, that there's things that are constantly against us, there's conflict that is constantly against us. We have to remember that God will arise and those enemies are going to be scattered. Verse two, may you blow them away like smoke as wax melts before the fire. May the wicked perish before God. 
but may the righteous be glad and rejoice before God. May they be happy and joyful. And there's a difference right there. There's a difference right there between the experience that the righteous have versus the experience that the wicked have before God, right? The wicked, the Bible says they're blown away like smoke. God just, he, yeah, he gets rid of them. They're blown away like smoke. They melt as whack before him, right? But the righteous, the Bible says us, we, we are the righteous of God. We are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. It says that we, we are glad and we rejoice in him. We are happy and joyful, right? And that is, that is what happens when we're in his presence. When we're in his presence, there, there shouldn't be any, um, all those things that, that afflict us, right? We come in with a heavy heart. If we come into his presence burdened and afflicted or whatever, the minute we step into his presence, his actual tangible presence, everything changes. Everything, our emotions change. We become happy and joyful. That is the promise of God. That is what happens. And so that's why we need to constantly be in his presence wherever we go, whether we're in the car, whether we're, um, you know, in a business meeting, when we are overwhelmed, when we're feeling like, you know, like we're weighed down by life, get into God's presence, get into God's presence. You know that you can be in God's presence wherever because he's everywhere right but you just take a moment let's just say you're in a, in a stressful situation you're in a stressful situation last week I, I had to be in the hospital for a couple of days with my mom my mom was sick and you know it was it was intense because there was like a lot of sick people and a lot of things going on and it I felt it I felt it in my in my spirit I felt it in my body that's that stress, you know, you hear people crying out and calling for the nurse and, and it was just, it was not good. But I tell you, I just, in my heart, I said, Lord, Lord, just release your peace. Lord, let your peace be in this place. Let your peace be in this place. And, and, and the minute I cried out to the Lord, like my whole mindset changed. My, the way I felt changed. And, you know, maybe those people didn't receive the peace that we were releasing in that environment. But I know that I felt it. I know that I felt it. And so being in the presence of God is just, you know, we just have to tap into the presence of God. When we are in this earth realm and we're dealing with life and we're dealing with situations and we're dealing with heavy things, just, just ask, even in your heart, maybe you, want, you won't be able to pray. You won't be able to pray out loud, but you just, in your heart, you cry out to the Lord to release his presence. And I tell you, his presence will come before you. Verse four, sing to God, sing in praise of his name. Extol him who rides on the clouds. Rejoice before him. His name is the Lord. David just let them know. <laughs> David just let them know his name is the Lord, which really is Yahweh. In Hebrew, it's Yahweh. Yahweh means the Lord, right? There's no other higher. There's no other God that's higher. There's no other God that's greater. Yahweh is the Lord. And he says, he, he extolled him who rides on clouds. And, and the reason I believe David included that in his line is because in those times, the people in the, of those nations, they had their myths. You know, they had their stories, their fables about their gods, right? Every nation had their own version of a God. And so um, David said, our God, Yahweh, he rides on the clouds in triumphant, right? In triumphant. And so what is interesting is that in um, Canaanite literature, they found, they found some, that it was written that Yahweh was the one who rode on storm clouds and not Baal. So it's interesting that they wrote that in Canaanite scripture. Scholars found that. But here David is letting them know Yahweh is the Lord. Verse 5. A father to the fatherless, a defender of widows, is God in his holy dwelling. And how beautiful is that? That he's not, he's not just a God of war, right? 
he's not a god but the reason why he goes to war it's because of this the, he he's a father to the fatherless he's a defender of widows he goes to war because he is fighting on behalf of these people not like not like how we have you know the, the, the president of Russia or, or, you know, we don't want to name him, but the guy in Russia, let's just call him that the guy in Russia, right? He, he went to war because he wanted to go to war. Our God doesn't fight like that. Our God, when our God goes to war, it's to defeat the enemy because the enemy is afflicting his people. That's why our God goes to war. He's not like earthly, earthly people that go to war to conquer and destroy and divide. That's not why I, our God goes to war. The earthly, earthly kings and earthly people, they go and they kill and destroy and they, they leave children fatherless, right? They leave women widow, as widows. But God, from his holy place, from his holy dwelling, he comes in to defend. Yahweh, the Lord, comes in to defend and to protect. You know, and we declare that over the, the, the people of Ukraine, the, those kids that have already lost their father and, and those women that have lost their husband to in this battle. We just pray that God would just, that they would know God will be the father to the fatherless and the defender of widows. We know that, but we pray that they would see that, receive that in Jesus name. And I love that the Lord is, um, he's involved in the affairs of humanity. He doesn't sit off. He's not a distant God like the, the gods of the fables and the stories and the myths of, of long ago, the ancient gods, you know, that they only, they war for power. They go into war for power. Our God goes to war to defend and protect. Amen. Verse six, God sets the lonely in families. He leads out the prisoners singing, but the rebellious live in a sun scorched land. And yes, you know, oftentimes we do feel lonely in life. You know, life makes us feel like we're alone sometimes and we're misunderstood and, and we don't have anywhere to turn to. You know, we have to deal with our own pain. But you know, the Father, our Heavenly Father, He's in tune with our suffering. He knows what we're suffering. He knows when we're suffering and he will always be there. He will always promise to be there. We just have to pay attention because the way he shows up comes in different forms, comes in different ways. It reminds me of the story of Sarah and Hagar, right? Hagar was the Egyptian handmaiden of Sarah, right? Hagar worked for Sarah. And this story is in Genesis 21. And, and, and we remember Sarah and Abraham, you know, God promised them that they would have children because they couldn't have children. Abraham was this rich man. He had, he walked with God and, and God increased him and gave him wealth. And Abraham said to God, God, who am I going to leave my inheritance to? You know, my, my, my servant, is he my, my heir? And, and God said to him, no, you're gonna go, go out and look at the stars, count them if you can. That's how many descendants you're gonna have and your descendants are gonna uh, bless the nations of the earth. And so they had that promise from God. They had that promise from God, but after waiting many years, many years, at least 14, at least 14 years, you know, they, they didn't, you know, see anything happen and Sarah was like she she's like many of us women who you know we take matters into our own hands right us ladies we take matters into our own hands and she was like you know God said we were gonna have kids but I don't see any I don't see anything happening so she took ha Hagar her maidservant her uh her handmaid uh, maiden and said look go sleep with my husband and go and have children for us <laughs> right and so that, that's taking matters into her own hand. So say Hagar went into Abram and she became pregnant. So she was technically the first surrogate mother. But when after she became pregnant, Sarah just, 
she flipped the switch on her and she became very jealous and envious of her. You know, seeing the woman that worked for you instantly get pregnant by your husband, like, you know, it, it was bad, it was bad. And so she could not stand the sight of her and she mistreated her and Hagar went and had her baby. She had Ish Ishmael, she gave birth to Ishmael. And so, um, you know, for all that time, there was conflict in the house because Sarah took matters into her own hands. She did not wait on God. But when Ishmael was like 14 years old, that's when Sarah became pregnant. Sarah became pregnant at the timing of the Lord. We don't know why God waited for so long, but he was trying to, to prove a point. They, they were way past childbearing ages, right? Both her and and um and abraham it was like 25 year a 25 year span between the promise that was given and and the fulfillment of that promise it was a 25 year gap that they had to wait and you know you could say that that feels unfair but god has a reason for everything he has a reason for everything and had sarah waited on god she would not have created this mess and this drama between isaac the son of promise and Ishmael, you know, he was not a son of promise. And so Sarah was like, oh, now that she had her baby, she was like, wait, he, Ishmael's not gonna inherit whatever belongs to my husband because Ishmael was the firstborn now. He was the firstborn. And so typically the firstborn would get the full inheritance. And so, you know, but God, God worked it all out. And so after Sarah gave birth to Isaac, she was like, you know what, we need to get rid of this, this woman and her son. <laughs> like now all of a sudden, Hagar was just a woman. And she said, we need to get rid of them. And so Abraham sadly had to take Hagar and Ishmael and banish them from their home and said, here, here's, here's some food, here's some water and good luck, <laughs> good luck. And so Hagar and Ishmael set out and they ended up in the desert. And you know, you're in the desert, you're gonna die. There's no water there, there's no provision there. Um, she probably didn't know where she was going and she sadly ended up in the desert. And she put her son under a tree because she felt like, I don't wanna see my son die. And so she put him under a tree and she went off to another area and she just was there crying, crying. And could you imagine? the feeling, the heartache of that situation. And she did nothing wrong. She just did what she was supposed to. And so God, the Bible says that God heard Hagar's crying. No, he really heard Ishmael crying and he sent an angel to Hagar. And he was like, "What? what's the matter, Hagar? Don't be afraid. God, God has heard your son crying as he lies there Go, go, go get him, go lift him up, take him by the hand, for I will make him into a great nation. Look at God, look at God, how he turns things around, right? He turned that situation around. They weren't supposed to inherit anything. You know, Ishmael wasn't supposed to be there, but he was, and God took care of him. He said, I will make him into a great nation. And so God, at that moment, showed them a well and said, go, go get drink and go back, to, go back to Sarah, go back to Abraham and you stay there. And the scripture says that God looked after Ishmael and he grew up and he became the father of the Arab nations, of the Egyptians and all, all, of, the, all of the Arab nations. So God fulfilled his promise to Hagar. And so that's why David wrote this. That's why David wrote in, in, in verse six, that God sets the lonely in families. He leads the prisoners out with singing. So that is beautiful. That is beautiful. That is God's protection. And verse quickly, cause I'm up, up against time here. Verse seven, eight, verse seven and eight and nine. When you, God, went out before your people, when you marched through the wilderness, the earth shook, 
the heavens poured down rain before God, the one of Sinai, before God, the God of Israel. You gave abundant showers, O God. You refreshed your weary inheritance. And so this is talking about when Israel came out of Egypt and they were in the wilderness. They disobeyed, right? They disobeyed. They weren't supposed to end up in the wilderness, but they ended up there because of their doubt and, and, and unbelief. Right. God said, you know, you're going to come out of Egypt and you're going to inherit the land. And they were like, they got scared. Right. They got scared and they took a wrong turn and they ended up in the wilderness. And the Bible says that that there in the wilderness, the heavens poured down rain. He gave them abundant showers. And so if you think about the wilderness, that wilderness experience that they had, you know, the people um, ended up in a place they weren't supposed to, they were supposed to be in a land where the Bible says flowed milk and honey, there was abundant provision, but they took the wrong turn, they went the wrong way, and they were in a desolate place. If you see pictures of where they were, it was, it's like, think about, um, What's that place in Arizona where it's just mountains and the Grand Canyon, you know, there's not, there's not, it's just rock and soil, right? Like the, the soil is like rock and, and there's no trees, there's no nothing. It, there was no water, no vegetation, there was no shade. It was a horrible place and they spent 40 years in that area just going around in circles. Moses said, Moses said, when finally they came out of there, Moses said, God led you through a vast and dreadful desert that is thirsty and waterless. It was filled with venomous snakes and scorpions. You can read that. That's in Deuteronomy 8, 15, right? They, they had to experience that wilderness um, because they disobeyed God. That wasn't God's intention for them, but that's where they ended up. But even though they went in that way and they landed in that place where they shouldn't have a place of, of desolation, a place of where there was no water, no, no, no vegetation, nothing. The Bible says that God gave them abundant showers. He refreshed his weary inheritance. Look at how God protects us in this difficult place that they were. He still provided for them. He still provided. And it's a reminder for us that even sometimes when we are walking in disobedience and we don't fulfill the purposes of God like we should, God is God just doesn't hand us off. He just doesn't hand, off, hand us off and say, good luck, y'all. <laughs> good luck. I told you to go this way. You went that way. Good luck. That's not how he works. That's not how he works. He doesn't operate in that way. He gave them abundant showers. He refreshed the weary. So we receive that today. We believe that for the people of Ukraine also, that he would refresh the weary, that he would shower them with the abundance of his presence. And I'm up to time here. Um, your people settled in it, right? They, they, they made a habitation. They, they made a dwelling place out of the wilderness. And he provided bounty for them. He provided for the poor. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Again, we're believing that even for the people of um, Ukraine, right? They're, they're, they're leaving their land. It says that almost 2.3 million people have already fled Israel, um, not Israel, I'm sorry, Ukraine, 2.3 people. And so we pray that God will provide for them god would provide for them and so oh hey jenny you're here girl god bless you god bless you my sweetness um god will always provide for us in our wilderness even when we're in disobedience so let's let's try not to walk in disobedience because it just makes it harder for us but know that if we are in disobedience god will protect us he will defend us he is our defender our protector. Okay, I'm going to leave it there. Um, tomorrow, I'm going to pick up from verse 17, and we'll finish Psalm 68, because I ran out of time. But God's word 
Mm. God's word is here for us to encourage us, to speak life to us, to speak strength to us in Jesus' name. Now, for those of you that are in this area, um, I am uh, I'm partnering with some people that are in my workplace and are taking up collections of hygiene products um, that are being shipped every week to Ukraine. They, they have an organization that is shipping directly to Ukraine. So um, we're collecting four, just four things, only four things. We're collecting bars of soap, not liquid soap, bars of soap, toothpaste, toothbrush, and baby wipes. We're collecting that and we're bringing it every week to this place and they're taking care of it. They're getting it shipped um, to Ukraine because it's going to families, refugees that are leaving the area. And so if you're from this area and you want to be part of that, just let me know. Send me a, a, a private message. Let me know if you want to take up a collection in your um in your office wherever it is you work not a monetary collection we need just these items again bar soap toothpaste toothbrush and baby wipes that is what we're collecting <laughs> jenny says me god bless you sweetheart um and just let me know and i will you know i will make sure that it gets to this organization and we'll ship it off. We'll ship it off. Probably we'll be doing this for a couple of, you know, a couple of weeks as long as this particular company can fly into um, Ukraine. As long as they can fly into Ukraine, they will be sending these things. Okay, Jenny says that she'll ask the library of her college to participate. Thank you. Thank you. Just reach out to me if you need more details. Okay, sweetheart. All right, my friends. <laughs> That's it. That's all I have for y'all. That's all I have. Um, I have a lot more, but I, this is what we'll have for today. So the Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you. And we talked about that Monday, I think. Tuesday, I don't remember. The Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. And the Lord give you shalom. May he give you his shalom. Be blessed, God willing. I'll see you tomorrow for part two of Psalm 68. Ciao, ciao. Ciao, ciao.